We are here to remember those who have gave so much and, and be the comments of your precious mother. Now rest in our minds and rest in our hearts for a long time, and may they never go away. The spotlight of advancing fire protection, though, in Minnesota and across this country rests upon you, and it rests upon your progress and the great work that you have done as public policymakers and advocates to a cause that says, and you all have said it well, no one should die this way. Congratulations, Minnesota. You are leading the way in helping building occupants and firefighters be safer. You're also helping building owners to navigate the long-term negative impact that we see of fire. And as a former fire investigator who's looked at many of these fires, fire fatalities, the trauma never really stops because the family members, and especially the firefighters who have to face that, live on. Thank you, Representative Knorr, for the relationships you have, obviously, with the family, for what you do in your community, the position in the state, but your perseverance to get this done made a difference. Senator Dietrich, you, for your dedication for the cause and for your ability to navigate that public policy way to get us to where we are and, as Tom described, that foundation we need. Senator Smith and Senator Klobuchar, thank you for your concern and care of your own state but also for this country and for your efforts in leading the way to let everyone know that fire is a local and a state problem, but it is a national problem that impacts us all as we see fires and building collapses and things occur across this country that are a codes and standards issue. And to all our fire officials in here and building officials who know that codes and standards are important. But to each and every one of you, to the staff members, to our own Minnesota team, to the state fire marshal's office, to the fire service, you all have made a difference in this, that this is public policy where you will save lives and property that will live beyond our lifetime. Our Minnesota team has dedicated countless hours to this day, but most of all to this cause. Now let me just touch on fire. Fire, I have been to the community where this fire has occurred. These pictures up here represent, as Fire Marshal Smith described, the horror faced by those occupants and to our firefighters who have gone outside to prepare for our demonstration today. This doesn't have to happen in the future. We know the solution in this law you've passed is a great start. And thank you, Representative Knorr, for remembering our last time here that you said it well. Early warning, that's the smoke detection. Early suppression, that's the fire sprinkler that does the important work to give our firefighters time to get there limit their risk to cancer and the cancer causing agents of what they face. Fire, thanks to the support though of Senator Smith and Senator Klobuchar for the Fire Act grants. We know more about fire and I've been blessed to be a part of that for the last 20 years of my career to burn to everything from homes to high rises. To know about and you see it on these charred walls the wind driven fires that our firefighters face. But without those fire grants, we would not have done the research. And I spent the first 15 years of my career not knowing what we know today. We just had to continue to get the fire message out. But this, for high-rise fires, we know that fire is much more severe, and we know that it's much more deadly than ever before. The materials and the contents in our fires is what's killing the occupants and what's killing our firefighters. Not only from the fire itself, but from cancer. Our firefighters that night, as Chief Smith said, they did an amazing job. They faced a wind-driven fire, which we have studied and we know can go over 2,000 degrees. We should not face a fire of that magnitude in this day and time. If some of the most experienced fire officers in our country underestimate fire, how do we as laypersons navigate that tragic event? And how can we expect them to react? At the closing, we'll conduct a side-by-side -side demonstration out here that will show you the impact of early warning with the smoke alarm. One unit has early suppression of fire sprinkler and firefighters. The other unit is missing the fire sprinkler. And the synthetic materials is all new. We have researched these. We know that just the contents of this one 8x8 unit out here, you'll see. We have tested that at Underwriters Laboratory inside a 3,200 square foot house. 
when you couple the new energy code, when you couple building materials, when you couple the things that are changing faster than we can possibly test them, it is a new day in the fire environment, and we know, and you'll see that, it will take a 3,200 square foot house to zero survivability in less than five minutes. From four minutes and 10 seconds to four minutes and 16 seconds, we've seen a second floor increase 1,000 degrees in these tests. I told our interns, and God bless our interns that are here today, I told them when they were testing this fire, I said, something had to be wrong. This fire couldn't increase that to that magnitude. And one of the best scientists at NIST at the time, now with UL, says, Shane, they're exactly right. As we see this experience today, feel free to come up afterwards and ask us questions and let us be your experts for that. But let's pledge today not to forget the Cedar High apartment fire. May we always remember them and their sacrifices. But please keep educating, keep advocating, and keep adopting public policy that will save lives. Thank you, and God bless you.